I'm recording. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Divert, diverted, right? All right, so Yahushua answered them, have I not chosen you 12? And one of you mm -hmm. is the devil. He spake of Judas Iscariot, the son of Simon, for he it was that should betray him being one of the 12. So we want to keep all the, everything we, we kind of gleaned from scripture about Judas, we want to keep them all in mind, okay? Mm -hmm. So that was that was one. Um, the other thing, which was a, really what we want to really pay attention to, right? Judas, as being one of Yahushua's disciples, he also received that gospel to preach, right? He received the gifts in Luke chapter nine, verse one and two, right? Yeah. Then he called his 12 disciples together and gave them power and authority over all devils and to cure diseases. And he set them to preach the kingdom of Yah and to heal the sick. So Judas was a gospel teacher. He was given the gift to heal. He was given the gift to exercise authority over demons. So if he can exercise authority over demons, that means that he can discern demonic presentations, right? And not only that, he was actively involved in Yahushua's ministry. That means he saw all the miracles. When Yahushua did the miracle of the, the baskets, remember how many baskets did they pick up? They picked up 12 oh. baskets. Each one of those disciples had a basket. Each basket was a testimony of that miracle. This is something they went home with. Judas was one of those people. Okay? He saw Lazarus. He knew he was there. He saw it. Okay? This is Judas. Mm -hmm. In John chapter 12, verses 12, 4 and 6, which we did last week, Precious nailed it. Sister Elisheba talked about it as well. Then said one of the disciples, Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, which should betray him. Why was not this ointment sold for 300 pence and given to the poor? This he said, not that he cared for the poor, but because he was a thief and had the bag and bear what was put therein. When we think about it, Judas and what he did it you know everything has a seed right everything has a precipice everything has a beginning right thief is the end right you're mm. because you've stolen so what's the seed of a thief right greed. greed right you're greedy you want something that somebody else has coveting mm -hmm. That's one of the mm -hmm. commandments, right? Thou should not covet. Mm -hmm. Right? The scripture says the love of money is mm. the all evil. So when we see Judas' heart condition, right? He wasn't just a betrayer. He wasn't just a thief. There was something found in him that the enemy was able to use, right? Listen, have ears to hear. Because Satan ain't mm -hmm. doing nothing different with each I mean, one of us. Hallelujah. I mean, hallelujah. Mm -hmm. You driving, Moria? Kane. Okay. Am I, are you hearing me? Yeah. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm muted. I'm muted. Sorry. All right. Um, so the other thing that he is, this is part of this is part of his legacy, is that he was an anti-messiah. When we think about the anti-messiah, we always think the anti-messiah, right? We know that there's going to be an anti-messiah or, or anti-Christ that's going to come in the end of days, that's going to be doing the works. He's going to be doing works and miracles in this world with governments that the scripture says if, if, if is even possible, even the very elect will follow. Pay attention that 
We all think that level for anti-Messiah. But anybody who is anti against Yah, his kingdom, his son, is an anti-Messiah. If someone can get for me Matthew chapter 16 and read verses 21 and 23, I'd appreciate it. Matthew 16 verses 21 and 23. Okay. Shalom. Shalom. Toda. All right. 16. And that was 21 and 23. Not two 23, just the two verses, right? 21, 22, and 23. Oh, all three. Okay. Okay. From that time, Yahashua began to show to his taught ones that it was necessary for him to go to Yerushalim and to suffer much from the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed and to be raised again the third day. And Kepha took him aside and began to rebuke him saying, be kind to yourself, master. This shall not be to you. But he turned and said to Kepha, get behind me, Satan. You are a stumbling block to me for your thoughts are not those of Elohim, but those of men. Hallelujah. You see what he, you see what he did right there? Now, this is the same Kepha that he said, upon this rock, I will build my house. I will build my assembly. But because he did not want what the father wanted, he was considered a Satan. See, the word Satan simply means adversary, right? What we don't want to be is an adversary to the father, to his plan, to his purpose for you, for, the, for mankind, because then you become an adversary. You become an anti-Messiah. You become contrary to heaven. No one wants to do that. Okay. So I wanted to share some of the things that we know about Judas to kind of frame really what he did. And what's happening here in this chapter. So far we know that he was chosen. By Yahushua. He was a gospel teacher. He was actively involved. In the ministry. He was a thief. He was. He had his heart. Sin was coveting. Greed. And he was an anti-Messiah. Okay. So. Still resting here in verse. Two, the next question that I want to ask, ask ourselves, right? We want to discuss a little bit is, did Judas have a choice? Did he have a choice? I don't, Ima, Cheryl and I, we was kind of discussing this earlier today. And um, I, I wanted us to kind of consider Elisheba. Scripture. Resist the devil and he will flee. Amen. He had a choice. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Right? Let's take a look at a couple of scriptures. In Psalms 119, 11, it says, Your word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. Right? So that tells us what? Right? If we had the word in us, and we're going to see this in a couple of more as we work through the slide. This is how we rebuke the enemy. Because Judas, he was a preacher. He was a gospel teacher. He was a disciple. He knew the word because we know his teacher. His teacher was Yahushua. That was his rabbi. So there was things that we know that Judas knew. Okay. He knew Exodus 23 verse 7. Keep Far from a false matter, and the innocent and the righteous slay not, for I will not justify the wicked. Judas knew this. This is Torah. They went through Torah every year, right? He also knew Deuteronomy 27, 25. 
Cursed be he that takes reward to slay an innocent person. And all the people shall say, amen. Judas knew this. When Judas did what he did, he cursed himself. And like Sister Moria said, that's why he was so burdened by the sin that he did that he unlived himself. Okay. What else did, what else? Let's take a look at Matthew chapter four. And we're going to take a look at verses one through 11. And I'll, I'll get that. All right. Because this is our example. This is how we know Judas had a choice. This is how we know we're supposed to hide that word in our heart. Matthew 4, 1. Then was Yahushua led up of the spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. And this is part of what came out with Sister Emma Sheryl and I were talking this morning. And when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, he was afterward and hungered. And when the tempter came to him, he said, if you be the son of Yah, command that these stones be made bread. But he answered and said, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of Yah. Then the devil take him up into a holy city and set him on a pinnacle of the temple and said unto him, if you be the son of Yah, cast yourself down for it is written. He shall give his angels charge concerning you, and in their hands they shall bear you up, lest at any time you dash your foot against a stone. Yahushua said unto him, It is written again, You shall not tempt Yahweh your mighty one. Again the devil take him up into an exceeding high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and the glory of them and said unto him, All these will I give you, if you will fall down and worship me. Then said Yahushua unto him, get thee hence, Satan, for it is written, you shall worship Yahweh your mighty one and him only you shall serve. Then the devil leave him and behold, angels came and ministered unto him. So there was a way out. He had a choice. He could have used the word to rebuke whatever came to his spirit or in his heart to do. Because if he didn't have a choice, he would have been punished unrighteously. And the father is righteous. But let's look at a, a, another scripture. Can someone get for me James chapter one? And we wanna look at verses 12 to 15. James 1, 12 to 15. Blessed is the man that endureth temptation, for when he is tired, um, when he is tried, he shall receive the crown of life, which is Yahuwah, has promised to them that love him. Let no man say, when he is tempted, I am tempted of Yahuwah. For Yahuwah cannot be tempted with evil, neither tempteth he any man. But every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust and enticed. Then when lust has conceived, it bringeth forth sin, and sin, when it is finished, bringeth forth death. Hallelujah. Is that not what happened to Judas, right? Everything. He conceived his, his lust, his greed. His covetous spirit led him to sin and his sin ultimately led him to his death, right? The word of Yah for us is to teach us how to walk wise, right? There's, there's no need for us to fall into the same traps that Judas did because now we're supposed to see why we need to hide the word in our heart why we need to be forever humble, why we need to be reminded and have people around us to hold us accountable. 
because we don't want sin to take us on this road trip that ultimately will land us in death. And if it's not an untimely death on this side of eternity, it will be that eternal death when our master come back and judge us. Hallelujah. And the last scripture I wanted to read in your hearing is first, um, first Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13. Um, it says, there has no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. But Yah is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above what that you are able, but will with the temptation also make a way to escape, that you may be able to bear it. So now what does that tell us? Judas could have went to one of his brothers. He could have went to Yahushua. He could have prayed. He could have, there was a way for him to escape this. Because when we read, I think we're going to get to it. I'm not going to jump ahead, but we're going to see that he could have escaped this. Okay. I'm just looking at my notes real quick. All right. So let's, let me see. All right. So we spoke about hints, right? We talk about the different modes of interpretation. And the second mode of interpretation is looking for what is being hinted at in the scriptures that we read. And so when we look at Genesis chapter 37 and we um, read verses 17 to 28, if someone can get that, I appreciate that. Genesis 37 verses 17 to 28. I'm going to look something else up. Thank you, sir. I love her. And the man said, They have left here, for I heard them say, Let us go towards Dathan. So Joseph went after his brothers and found them in Dathan. And they saw him from a distance. And before he came near them, they plotted against him to kill him. And they said to each other, See, this master of dreams is coming. Now then, come and let us now kill him, then throw him into some pit and shall say, Some wild beast has devoured him. Let us then see what comes of his dreams. But Ruben heard and rescued him from their hands and said, Let us not strike his being. And Ruben said to them, Shed no blood. Throw him into the pit, which is in the wilderness, and do not lay a hand on him in order to rescue him out of their hands and bring him back to his father. So it came to be, when Yosef had come to his brothers, they had stripped Yosef of his robe, the long robe which was on him. And they took him and threw him into a pit. And the pit was empty. There was no water in it. And they sat down to eat a meal. And they lifted their eyes and looked and saw a company of Ishmaelites coming from Gilad with their camels bearing spices and balm and myrrh going to take them down to Mitzarim. And Yehuda said to his brothers, what will we gain if we kill our brother and conceal his blood? Come and let us sell him to the Ishmaelites and let our hand be upon him and let not our hand be upon him, for he is our brother, our flesh, and his brothers listened. And men, Midianite traders, passed by, so they pulled Joseph up and lifted him out of the pit and sold him to the Ishmaelites for 20 pieces of silver, and they took Joseph to Misarim. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. In Luke 24, verse 27, it says that Yahushua started at Moses and the prophets, and he expounded upon them all scriptures that concerned him. So when we look at the story of Genesis, this 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 narrative of what happened to Joseph, because this actually happened to Joseph, right? This would have been one of those instances where Yahushua would have opened up to say, this points to me. Because Judah 
his brother sold him over to the enemy. Judas name was not Judas. Judas name is that's the um, Latinized name of Yehuda. They had the same name. And it's no coincidence that it was Yehuda, Joseph's brother, that tried, that sold him. It's not a coincidence that Yehuda, his friend, his student, someone that he trusted, sold him over to the enemy. So that's one thing that we can see from Genesis was hinting or foreshadowing something we was going to see fulfilled in the Mashiach. But there was something else that's very profound about who did this. Because what we see is this was actually pointing to the nation of Israel turning against the Most High. Because remember, his name is Yehuda. They were called Jews because they were coming from the tribe of Judah. At this time, the 10 tribes are scattered. The only ones that returned to Jerusalem was what was considered the house of Judah, which was made up of the tribe of Judah and the tribe of Benjamin or, the, or Benjamin. So they're like a prototype of what actually happened because it was only a small portion of the Yahudim that believed in Yahushua. As a whole, they did they denied him. And we see that fulfilled because we know how the story ends, right? Who do you want? They said, give us Barabbas. That was his nation. That was Israel. Israel turned against the Most High. And so it was significant that it was this person, Yehuda right? Ishkariat, you know, and even his name is curious because usually in Hebrew, you're usually named, let's say, for example, Yahushua ben Joseph, right? Ben means son. This is the only place in scripture, and I haven't done an exhaustive study because it's coming to my spirit now, where he's not called ben Iscariot or ben Simon. He's called Ishkariot, Ish means man. That points to his carnality, right? His greed, his belly. That's why his belly bust. You know, in, in, in um, one narrative of his death, you know, when he fell, he bust open his guts and his bowels spilled out. Greed. But all of this is setting up a story, not even a story, it's a revelation. Like he, the Messiah would often say, he who have ears to hear, let him hear. He who have eyes to see, let them see. That this was, it could have been any one of the disciples, but it was on purpose that it was this one because he represented the whole nation betraying him and ultimately killing him. Hallelujah. So I know that was that was a lot of information and we've only gotten to the first two verses. Any any thoughts, any questions about anything we've discussed so far before we continue reading? Um, actually, when I was reading, I, I, I also ended up with the, the story of Joseph Amen. Um, where in. Um, I don't, I'm 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 sorry. I don't remember if you actually read it yet. I don't know if it's first two or three where the devil enters into yeah, yeah. Judas. Mm -hmm. um, and so it, it gave me pause. I, I paused at that because we we know the devil's only allowed to do what he's permitted to, to do. And so it was like the father already knew, knowing the end from the beginning, knew that the, the adversary was going to come to this point and do this thing. And so the adversary, so the most high, use what he was going to do to benefit the world, right? And so that's how I ended up in um in Bereshit at the end of the end of chapter 50, where where Yosef says what you intended for harm, Yahweh meant oh, for God. good, because now I'm saving everyone who's I'm going to save everyone, which is what Mashiach done. 
the oh, adversary yeah. intended it for harm, but it was all a plan of, of the most high for salvation. Hallelujah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Great connection, Moria. Great connection. Toda for that. Absolutely. Any anyone else? Okay. Just in verse two, you know, like why say he was Simon's son? It made me think like personally, right? How what we do reflects back on our parents, right? Like we don't want ever to get a reputation that is so vile that it is now attached to our parents. Now we don't want to do that. That's going to attach to our heavenly parent, right? This is why he tells us to be holy as he is holy, to be set apart as he is set apart because what we do reflects back on him. So that kind of stood out to me as well that they specifically said who his father was. Um, all right, so verse three. Yahushua, knowing that the father had given all things into his hands and that he was come from Yahweh and went to Yahweh, he raised from supper and laid aside his garments and took a towel and girded himself. After that, he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel wherewith he was girded. Then come he to Simon Kepher, and Kepher said unto him, Rabbi, do you wash my feet? Yahushua answered and said unto him, What I do, what I what I do, you know not now, but you shall know hereafter. So basically Yahushua was saying, Chill, give me a minute, let me finish what I'm doing, and then I'll explain what I'm then you'll figure, then you'll know why I'm doing what I'm doing. Um Kepher says unto him, You will never wash my feet. Yahushua answered, if I wash you not, you have no part in me. Simon Kepha says, Kepha says, Rabbi, not only my feet, but also my hands and my head. Yahushua said to him, he that is washed need not save, need not, I'm sorry, he that is washed need not save to wash his feet, but is clean every whit, and you are clean, but not all. For he knew who would betray, who should betray him. Therefore he said, you are not all clean. So after he had washed their feet and taken his garment and was sat down again, he said unto them, do you know what I have done? Now, part of the ancient Eastern culture was that when you got a guest, this is part of how you greeted them. And we said this happened to the Messiah multiple times where uh, I believe it was Mary Magdalene who washed his feet with his with her tears. Um, last week, we read how you know um, Mary anointed his feet. Um, but even when we go back to the Torah in Bereshit, in Genesis, when Abraham had visitors, right? He said, let me, you know, wash your feet. So this was a way that you greeted your guests because they were walking. It was dusty. That was um, a sign of hospitality. So usually it would be a servant in the home that would do that. Or it would be, it could be the wife of the um of the of the master of the home that would do this so when peter says yo whoa you're not washing my feet because the dynamic of their relationship is yahushua is the rabbi right rabbi means the highest teacher and everybody else are students so it was like this is this is out of order Right. So Yahushua asks them, basically he's he's asking them, what did you observe? What did you just see me do? What, did, what what are you gleaning from my actions? And as you could imagine, they were probably like cricket, cricket, like we don't we don't know. And he says in verse 13, he says, You call me master, and you call me rabbi, and you say, Well, for that's what I am. I am. And if I and rabbi and master, and I've washed your feet. You also ought to wash one another's feet. Now, does he mean literally when someone comes into your house, like now you got to wash everybody's feet? You got to pan out, right? He says in verse 15, I have given you an example that you should do as I have done, right? Humility, sister um, Elisha put it in the in the chat. Humility, right? We're supposed to serve one another. We we can't just love in word. We have to love in deed, right? You said if you see your brother, your sister, you know, hunger. You say, oh, go and be full. Like that's not going to help them. 
right? They another time where Yahushua says, you know, this is, he says that when you have, you know, you fed me when I was hungry, you clothed me when I was naked, and they said, but when did we see you naked and when did we see you hungered? And Yahushua said, when you've done that to those who believe in me, those who are following me, you've done that to me, right? He's making it personal to those that we serve, that those that we show this humility to, that we show this love to, right? Yahushua is changing the dynamics, right? The rabbi is not above the disciples, right? He is God. He is their teacher. And he got down on his knees and washed 12 pairs of feet, one including Judas, right? The scripture says that it rained on the just and the unjust. He says in verse 16, Verily, verily, I say unto you, the servant is not greater than the master, neither he that is sent greater than he that sent him. Verse 16 um, verse 17, if you know these things, happier, happy are you if you do them, right? James says it's not the hearer of the word, but it's the doer. I believe it was James, right? It's not those who just hear, be like, oh, okay, that's a good word. I got a good word. It is those that do, you know? And so part of, I know for our congregation, our assembly, part of what our, our Seder for Passover is after we finish our meal, we do the foot washing because he said to do it, right? And this is happening during Passover. So this is one of the times of the year that we literally take his word for what he says and we wash each other's feet. It reminds us of what we are called to do, right? We are called to serve one another, to be humble before one another, to not be so high minded, high mighty that you can't wash somebody else's feet, right? That's the lowest part of your body, right? You can't do that unless you are down before them, right? When you think about the word Baruch, the Hebrew word for bless, um, it's connected to your knee, right? The Hebrew word for knee in Hebrew is Barak. So the thought of being a blessing is you actually humbling yourself and giving of yourself to somebody else, right? We think that as the receiver, you're, you know, you're, you're getting, you're gaining, but the giver is putting themselves in a position of humility because they're taking from what they have. They, they're taking from what they own. They're taking from what's within to bestow to you. And that's why it's a Barak, it's a Baruch right? That's why the knee is bended. And this is what Yahushua is showing us because he's on bended knees doing this thing. Okay. Hallelujah. He says again, verse 17, if you know these things, happy are you if you do them. There's another definition of sin, right? The scripture says sin is transgression of the law. That's one definition. Another definition of sin. I don't know the address right now. It says, for those who know to do good and do it not, it is sin right? So now sin is beyond the word, the book, those 66 books. It's beyond Genesis and Revelation. Now, Holy Spirit says to you, you should buy that co-worker a cup of coffee. Yeah, they've been mean to you. Yeah, they're nasty, but go ahead and buy them a cup of coffee. But your heart is of your heart said, I ain't buying no coffee. That is sin to you because the Holy Spirit told you to do something specific. And the word says, he who knows to do good, but does not do does good, it is sin, right? So we want to be mindful of when the Ruach is telling us to do a thing, to humble yourself and do it because you don't want that to be sin unto you. All right, verse 18. I speak not of you all. I know whom I have chosen. But that the scripture might be fulfilled, he that eats my bread with me has lifted up his heel against me. And that could be found in Psalms chapter 41, verses 9 to 13, right? Yahushua was fulfilling prophecy. Judas was prophesied to do this thing, right? And 
one of the things I wanted to also highlight is the connection between Judas and Hasatan. Judas had no excuse. He lived, he was chosen by the Messiah. He saw, he did works. He himself did works. How do we know that? Because the scripture says that when he sent them out, they came back and say, master, even the devils have to obey our word. So it's not the 11, it was Judas too. So Judas did work. He literally did work for the gospel, for the kingdom. He had no excuse, but sin was found in him. Just like Hasatan, right? He was created perfect. When we read in Ezekiel, it talks about that he was created perfect. He was the ministering cherub or cherub, right? He had, he, he ordered, he was a part of the worship. He was filled with instruments. But the scripture says that sin was found in him. So now, what does that mean for us? Look in that mirror, that mirror not being the mirror, but that being the word, and see where you are not lining up. Not you, me too, us as believers. Where does our lives not line up with the word, right? You may not know you are a covetous person, but it'll find you. The Father's going to stir something inside you that's going to make that sin raise to the top. And when it does raise to the top, what are you going to do? Whatever it is, right? The scripture says that in six days, Yahweh created the heaven and the earth. On the sixth day, man was created. But Yahweh said, I'm going to make man to be in my image and in my likeness. So we are living a life where we are in the process of being made in the image and likeness of Yahweh, of his son. So that means there's going to be things in us that's going to have to be purged, pruned, cut away. You're not going to know that you are an impatient person until you have about two, three children. You might not know that you're a covetous person until you, your neighbor, or the, like, you know, what do you say, the Joneses or whatever the case may be. You might not know that you are gossiping until someone says, man, you gossip a lot, right? But these are the things that we don't want to find out at judgment. When the books are open. The other thing about that is, there's a scripture that says, well, then I do many works in your name. Then I prophesy in your name, you know, and Yahushua says, get away from me. I never knew you, right? Doing the works, functioning for the kingdom is a good thing. It's a gift, right? But there's something else that Yahweh is looking at. He's not just looking at the, how you exhibit his power, how you use your gift, He's looking at the heart because Judas' issue was a heart issue. He's looking at our love. So yet Messiah had to go down on his knees and wash feet so you can see how to love, how to serve, how to be humble. But he continues. Verse 19. Now I tell you before it comes, and when it comes to pass, you may believe that I am he. So Yahushua was still giving them clues, like still having to prove who he is. Verse 20, verily, verily, I say unto you, he that receives whomsoever I send receives me, and he that receives me receives him that sent me, right? When you believe in Yahushua, you are believing in the same time in Yah. And if you don't believe in Yahushua, you have no access to Yah. Is, it really is that simple. We learned that a couple of chapters ago about the sheepfold, right? He's at the door. There's no other way to come in. He's it. Verse 21. When Yahushua had thus said, had thus said, he was troubled in spirit and testified and said, Verily, verily, I say unto you that one of you shall betray me, right? Then the disciples looked at one another and doubting of whom he spoke. They had no idea that who, who is it, right? Now there was leaning on Yahushua's bosom one of his disciples whom Yahushua loves. Simon Kephard therefore beckoned on him and said, 
that he should ask who it is. Verse 25, he then lying, laying on Yahushua's breast said unto him, Rabbi, who is it? So what does that teach us? Ask the father questions. If you have doubts, if you're unsure, if you need direction, ask him, right? And because what happens in verse 26, Yahushua answered. They were all sitting there wondering, but all it needed was a simple question, right? What in your life are you waiting to understand? Have you asked the father? Have you asked him why, when, when, how, whatever the case may be, right? Ask the father. He's, he's about our relationship with him. Verse 26, Yahushua answered, he it is to whom I shall give a sop when I have dipped it. And when he had dipped the sop, he gave it to Yehuda or Judas Iscariot, the son of Simon. And after the sop, Satan entered him. Then said Yahushua unto him, that you do, do quickly, right? Yahushua, was a, he, he knows the spiritual realm. He saw it, he knew it, he wasn't caught by surprise. And he tells that spirit, go do what you're going to do, do it quickly. Yahushua was a man, right? His spirit was was troubled. All right, this is like, just get it over with. That's, that, that's his sentiment at this time, right? For us, what does that tell me? Guard your gates, Satan can only enter if we allow him, right? He doesn't bang in your door, kick it in. We don't even realize how we allow him in. Be mindful of the things you listen to, the things you watch, the things you read, the company you keep. Because these are indirect ways that we allow Satan access to our spirit. We're spiritual beings. We're not fighting, the scripture said, we ain't fighting flesh and blood. Satan ain't just trying to get us with physical things. It starts in the spirit. He has to put a thought. He has to, you know, put something under your nose so you can smell, right? He has to put that carrot, whatever it is. So you know what that means? Know your triggers. Know your weaknesses. Seal up the cracks. Gird up. Put your armor on. Because Satan doesn't play fair. He doesn't play fair. Right? Verse 28. Now, no man at the table knew for what intent he spoke of this, right? They were just wondering, and then he whispers, Jews get up and go, and no one understands why. Verse 29, for some of them thought, because Jews had the bag that Yahushua had said to him, buy those things that we have need of for the feast, or that he should give something to the poor. He then, having received the sop, went immediately out, and it was night. It's not night for no reason, right? We know another person came to Yahushua at night, Nicodemus, right? So that just tells you the spirit that people be working are working under. Therefore, when he was gone out, Yahushua said, now is the son of man glorified, right? Everything's in, all the pieces are in place. Like um, Sister Moria said, right? They thought, Judas thought he was doing something to hurt the Messiah, but it was all of it was going to work. All things work for the good of those who are in Mashiach, right? He says, now is the son of man glorified and Yahweh is glorified in him. And if Yahweh be glorified in him, Yahweh shall also glorify him in himself and shall straightway glorify him. Little children, yet a little while I am with you. You're going to seek me. And as I said unto the Yahudim, where I go, you cannot come. So now I say to you, a new commandment I give unto you, that you love one another as I have loved you, that you also love one another. Can someone get Leviticus chapter 19, verse 18? Leviticus 19, 18. I got it. Thanks, Brush. Leviticus nineteen eighteen. You shall not take vengeance nor bear any grudge against the children of your people, but you shall love your neighbor as yourself. I am the Lord. Yahushua said this is a new commandment. What's different? Low, low. Is it new? Yahushua said a new commandment I give to you. All right. 
But this is what he says. As I have loved you, right? It's a different level of love. Sacrificially. Laid, the scripture says that lay down your life. And I don't mean that you got to stand in front of a bullet. Someone's getting shot. That means Paul said to all people, I became all things so I may win souls, right? He said, if meat offends my brother, I'm not going to eat meat. If this offends my sister, I'm not going to do that. That's sacrificial, right? He said, everything is lawful. Not everything means that you can just do whatever you want. But for example, I can eat any kind of clean meat. But if eating meat totally offends my brother, I'm not going to eat meat, right? That because we're free to do what we want and we can within Torah doesn't mean we have to do everything if we have a brother or a sister who's weaker in faith. They don't understand you can eat clean meat. They figure you can only eat these vegetables. So guess what? When I come around you, I'm not going to eat because it offends you, right? There are some Israelites um, in honor of the Sabbath. They won't eat warm food. That's fine. That means I'm not going to eat warm food in front of you. I will bring a cold dish if I'm going to fellowship with you. Because showing my love for you is more important than eating a warm meal. That's, that's what's different. Stop loving the way we say we love. Love the way he loved. Because this is right before his passion. And then he's, he continues the, the thought in verse 35. By this shall all men know that you are my disciples, if you have love one to another. Now, he didn't say, by wearing zits, people will know that you are my disciples. He didn't say, by keeping the Sabbath. Now, these are things that we are supposed to do. I'm not saying we don't do it. But he didn't say, that's how the world would know we are his students. He said, by the love the sacrificial love, the love the way I love, because most people are going to say, oh, wow, that's strange. He, she crashed her car and she didn't even sue her. He did this and he didn't, even, you know, what, that's, what's that about? Love. That's how Yahushua wants us to be different as we walk in obedience to Torah. Love the way he loved. Verse 36, Simon Kepha said unto him, Rabbi, where are you going? Yahushua answered and said, where I go, you can't, you cannot follow me now, but you shall follow me afterwards. And Kepha said unto him, Rabbi, why can't I, why cannot I follow you now? I will lay down my life for your sake. Famous last words, right? Verse 38, Yahushua answered him. He said, will you lay down your life for my sake? Verily, verily, I say unto you, the cock shall not crow till you have denied me thrice. The question for us to meditate on. And I think from this chapter, there were a lot of questions that we can think about. Will you lay down your life for Yahushua? You know, we say fair exchange and no robbery. He's getting ready to be tortured and murdered for something he didn't do so that we, you, right, can earn some, get something we've never earned that we shouldn't have access to. But because of what he did, we now have access. Do you realize one day we're going to see the face of Yah? One day we're going to see his face. We're going to see our master. We're going to get a new name. We're going to learn his new name, right? So, but if we don't lay down our lives here, we don't get to enter in what he died for, right? And he didn't just die so we can have eternal life. He said, I, he said, I want you to live and to have, live in exceeding abundance or blessing, to, to paraphrase the verse, right? He wants us to live good while we're here. He wants us to live blessed. He wants us to live in increase. He wants us to live and move in his power. He wants us to bring glory to him and glory to, to his father. These are all the things we gain if we lay our lives down. Peter said, I will lay my life down. 
Yahushua was said three times. Now the cock crow is not an actual cock crowing. It's a way, a standard of telling time, which is like, let's say we say like cocks usually crow, I don't know. Let's say cocks usually crow around 5 a.m. That's what Yahushua meant, right? During the time when cocks crow would be when before that time you're going to deny me. So the person that would make sound an alarm to prayer, um, like they would be the um, like the town crier, that would be the person who would be the one to announce these different watches or time changes or time of prayer in ancient Israel. Um, and so that's that's what he was talking about, right? It's not an actual cock crow, like an actual cock, but like but the person that would announce the shift of the watches or the time um, during the day. And he tells them, you're going to deny me three times. Now, if someone told you, right, you can't make this personal. Because this ain't, this ain't about Kepha no more. Kepha dead, right? Kepha, he's waiting for the resurrection. This is about us. If someone told you that you would deny the Messiah, you might be like, nah. Well, this is what I say. Pray you don't. Pray you don't get a, against the wall. Pray you're not in a hard position. Pray it ain't hunger or your job or the life of a loved one or your own. This is why we have to know where in us is their weakness. And the only way we get strong, because this is a spiritual battle, is to get strong spiritually. Pray, read your word, study your word, worship. Fellowship with like-minded believers, if possible, right? Have a sense of accountability with a sister, someone who will say, yo, your, your poo-poo stink. You need to fix that, right? Get right. The scripture talking about in Galatians, right? If you see a brother in a fault, go and restore them in the spirit of meekness and love. That's love, right? Um, so we're going to stop there. We actually did complete chapter... 13 and um yeah willing who whose hand is raised someone hand raised okay hallelujah um so before right okay sister Elisha has some notes in there about the cock crowing um so um any any questions thoughts feedback about the chapter what what really stood out to you? What would be your takeaway? Um, what would be your takeaway from the chapter so far, Emily Araya? Shalom. I did have a question, though. I was wondering, because I was looking there, is Simon the Pharisee the same as Simon the leper? <laughs> Alicia oh, Bass. Alicia Bass. <laughs> <laughs> oh, she, had a, she had a similar question about um, oh, uh -huh. it wasn't that exact question but it was similar um, but we don't know but at the end of the day the name Shimon was a very popular name popular okay you know, so there, was, there were various Shimon there were various Yehuda there was various Yahushua even Yahushua his name was a popular name you know so it, it's hard to okay. say without, unless the scripture said the leap the leper like the same way they said like you know Elazar because Elazar Lazarus was also a popular mm -hmm. name and so when they spoke about him he would they would say the one that was resurrected right so it doesn't at least I haven't seen that it said it was the same one um so I'm, I'm gonna say I don't know, but I don't think the scripture says they were the same person. Okay. okay. Um, Sister Elisheba. Yeah. Uh, before I say, before what I, say, I say what I say, Ima, that's that's Ima, the that's, that's the love. <laughs> Dang, um, I'm gonna start digging around to see. <laughs> yeah, you do share. Oh, okay. <laughs> now. It was more so of a question than a than a share, but my thought was like, if Yahshua sat there and said, the person that dips his bread with me, I, that's the one. Now, he was very clear. He didn't mince words with that. 
wouldn't wouldn't you think everybody at the table be looking to see who's dipping the bread? Like how 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 did it just go over the head that dude is the one when he was he the one was that the one disciple? Remember, it was it was probably John that because John was probably the one they believe John was the one because anytime John talks about himself, he doesn't give his name. He just says the the the, the, the disciple that the Messiah loved. So right. he was speaking to Yahushua to John him um, personally. Mm -hmm. And so that's why no one else heard, right? It's almost oh, like oh, okay, okay, okay. Like you go ahead, not like, make sense. You go, you go ask and come back and tell us. Yeah. Okay, that makes uh -huh. that. that makes sense. <laughs> um, just so more, for yeah. me, the takeaway, yeah. Um, the takeaway for me is really um because, like you very clearly outlined, that we can understand that. Judas was hand selected, chosen, anointed, touched. Um, he took the Pesach. You know, he was he he was a part of the inner circle of Mashiach, and he was deceived. So that scripture, you know, even the very elect may be deceived, is my takeaway. Because one would assume, just like Kepha assumed, Kepha was like, oh, I would never, I would never, I would never um, deny you, you know, it will never happen. But yet Mashiach was like, yes, it will. It's about to happen, you know, within hours. Again, another hand chosen, picked, saw all the miracles, had one of the baskets, you know, front seat, front row, front seat, same thing. So, you know, who are we so far removed from the, such an intimate relationship with, with, with Mashiach and with the Most High? we are at a greater risk of deception and being pulled away. So it's like, you know, guards up, I stay woke, pay attention, and really Man. a lot of self-reflection into what those Man. things may be that can deceive us or cause our deception. And, you know, the point is, you know, we, it, it may not be so obvious, you know, like, like you, you also mentioned, you know, you oh, may not learn about up. yourself until... <laughs> You know, you know, you into your piece of situation to know yourself. Like you may not know your covetous, and then what does that mean? Then your greed, and then what you? What's the next thing you're going to do? So just we have to be really, you know, observant and engage with, you know, you know, as we as 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 we out here, you know, it's just it's just not this. this that's not going to be easy. Yeah, stay. I stay woke. Yeah, it's just the illustration. I stay like, woke. Wrenched in his word, we do. Listen, sisters, if I tell you nothing else, stay in his word, stay prayed up, fast, pray, study, read, you know, because we can't, we have too much on the line to lose. But I will leave you with this one thought, because this is something else I want to encourage us with. Because sometimes as parents, right, we say, well, I raised my kids this way. And they just chose to live a different way of life. Right. And then what did I do wrong? You did nothing wrong. Right. None of us are perfect. Right. But a consistent stream of living in righteousness is all we're called to do. Right. Teach them. The scripture says teach them. And as they become adults, they have the freedom to, cho to choose for themselves. It's not anything that we necessarily did as parents, as mothers. God knows for us a lot of times that weighs heavy on our heart. Like, what did I do wrong? What did Yahushua do wrong as a rabbi, right? And even better, what did Yah do wrong for Satan to do what he did, right? Sometimes, and this is what I, when I was raising my kids, what I would always say is I just make sure my conscience is clear, right? I'm going to make sure that I do my part, Yah, you do your part, and Yah willing, he brings the increase, right? And so, Live the life where, you know, you're not, you're not having too much regret because you do have regret, right? But for the most part, you know, do what you're supposed to do and everything else we can't control, you know? So I encourage you, whoever has children or who might, who might need this word of encouragement, don't think you did something wrong while your children are not walking in the way they were raised or they were taught or being taught. They have to choose for themselves. You be a faithful example, and you continue to keep prayer and um, let y'all do the work.
because everyone has to find Yah for themselves. We can only, we only lead, we only, you know, that light, that that north star, but it's, it's really going to be an individual choice, even for our children. So be encouraged by that. Hallelujah. Quick question. Yeah, Prash. What was, what was Leviticus, Leviticus of, of Captain Verse Captain I read? read? 1918. 1918, okay. Hallelujah. All right, so we'll close out in prayer. Hallelujah. And y'all willing, we will be back next week and we will jump back into, uh, jump into chapter 14. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Abiyah, thank you. Thank you so much, Father. There's just too much to really put into words at this time, Abiyah. Mind, my mind is just so full of just how important it is, Yah, for us to press into you. Father, give us the discipline. Give us the strength to persevere in our relationship with you, Father to love as Yahushua loved and to really take our relationship with you import, like, like it's the most important thing in our lives, Father, that we come into your presence and learn to recognize your voice, that we walk after you, that we become and remain as little children, dear Father. You know, you blessed me to hear something this week where this lady said that nowhere in the Bible does it say that we're the adults of God. You know, we are children and may we live our lives, Father, as children, you know, seeking your permissions, asking you questions, waiting, you know, for a response, you know, waiting to know what you would have us do. Um, just change our mindset, Father, and that we can truly be like little children before you, Father, um, to be humble and to be servants to one another, Father, in a spirit of sincere love. Father, I pray this prayer um, in faith and thanksgiving in the name of your son, Yahushua HaMashiach. Father, may your blessing be upon each and every sister that is here this evening, Abiyah. Um, meet the needs that's in their hearts, Father, and strengthen them and encourage them, Father, in their walk with you, Father. Um, just give them a taste to know how good you are, Heavenly Father, and encourage them in their walk, Father. I ask this in Yahushua's name. Say hallelujah, todayah, amen. Thanks. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.